Hello, I'm Willie George. I want to welcome you to this edition of the Faith Roots Podcast. I'm so glad that you joined me. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit that thumbs up button down there and let people know you like what you're hearing. That gets us in front of more people, believe it or not. And then be sure to go to the website because uh, when I write the devotions to go along with this, they're printed email devotions, sometimes I hit on a little different emphasis. And so it'll really help you to wrap your mind around the whole teaching if you do that. So they're free, and so I encourage you to go to myfaithroots.com and find that. Hebrews 11.1, New King James says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The New English Bible translates it in a slightly different way. It says faith gives substance to our hopes. Uh we read in the book of Hebrews, and you can see it in the first chapter of Genesis, that the world was created through the Word of God. John 1 says that. And God used faith to create this material universe. And, and this so very important to understand that faith is the parent force of everything that we see in this physical universe. Uh, faith created it. It wouldn't have come into existence without faith. God hoped he had an imagination for what he wanted to create, but then he took his hopes a step further and he solidified them by using the force of faith. That's why the scripture says, now faith gives substance. It gives substance to what we hope for. You have to have hope to start with. Hope's a good thing. But then faith takes it on further. It brings it into reality. And that's what God did. He released his faith by speaking words. And what we see is... After God created this physical universe, He sometimes deals with it or corrects it, and He makes adjustments in it. And you can see that through the, the uh, Old Testament, all through the miracles of the Old Testament, you see the parting of the Red Sea. That's a, 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 a defiance of the laws of nature, but it's okay because God is the one who created this earth, and He can do what He wants to. Jesus walking on water. In the New Testament, that's another one. Uh, water came out of a rock in the wilderness, in a desert area, in the Old Testament. Now, I've, I've seen the pictures of where this happened. You can see the, the, the evidence of a huge, huge water flow out in the middle of uh, the Arabian desert. Uh, there, there was a time when an axe head floated. Uh, they needed to recover this axe head. <laughs> it's interesting to me. You wouldn't think of an axe head as being... Uh, uh, an extremely rare and hard to come by commodity. If it float, went to the bottom of the pond, just let it go. But uh, this fellow came to Elisha the prophet and said, Master, this, this axe head was borrowed. And the prophet caused that axe head to float back up and come and join itself again to the handle of the axe. It's, it's fascinating how God thinks. Uh, manna uh, is another one. Uh, the widow had oil multiplied, 2 Kings chapter 4. That doesn't happen by the natural laws of nature, but God can do what He wants to do because He is the parent force, faith is the parent force, and faith can adjust and correct this universe. Now, we see a shift in the New Testament. It's totally different in the New Testament because the whole purpose of God's faith and God's miracle power is different. Now, now you need to understand this. In the Old Testament, the purpose was to get the Messiah to planet Earth. And in order to do this, God had to have a people, Israel, through whom the Messiah would come. He had to give them laws. He had to work in their lives. He had to create amazing stories, and He did. And all of these things were designed to identify the Messiah. This is the mark of God. God doesn't just ask us to take somebody at face value. When God is in something, He foretells it. It's called prophecy. It's unique to Christianity and Judaism. You don't see it in other religions. So this prophecy is at least one-third of the Bible. And so you've got God foretelling all of these things, and He uses Israel to bring the Messiah to planet Earth. That's why even to this day, the Jewish people are still persecuted more than any other race or nationality of people on planet Earth. They're persecuted because they brought the Savior to the world. Satan hates it, and he does everything that he can to destroy them. Did what he could to destroy them uh, by the Babylonians and by the Romans who destroyed their city, Jerusalem, both times, uh, tore down the temple. 
And so you see that God had to work with a group of people who were sometimes disobedient, but he did miracles to keep them alive, to keep them going. And there was one particular part of Israel, in particular it was the tribe of Judah, that would bring about the line that the Messiah would come from. And then it was not only Judah, but it also came down to the house of David. That really narrows it down. And there was a time when there was just one person left, one male left in the house of Judah. And the whole thing is lost and the Word of God's broken. But I'm going to tell you something, the Word of God cannot be broken. It may look like it's hanging by thread, but God's Word is never proven wrong. So in the Old Testament... The great miracles were done to save Israel as a people, as a nation. So you see lots of battles won and supernatural occurrences of hailstones falling from heaven and and David killing Goliath and all of these different things that happened to preserve the people as a nation. You don't see that same emphasis in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, you saw some healings, It's not that they weren't there, they just were not as prominent as they became in the New Testament. And here's the reason for the shift. In the New Testament, once Messiah came, once Jesus came, the purpose was to reach the individual. Now salvation is not about a whole nation being saved, it's about individuals being saved. God deals with us now, not so much as a nation, but as individuals. That doesn't mean that God doesn't deal with nations, because He does. But God deals with individuals, and individuals determine their eternal destiny by whether or not they receive God's gift or reject God's gift. So you see all of these amazing miracles in the New Testament that are directed at a person. And what I want you to see is that God does this amazing stuff to stimulate the faith of people. And people have faith in God because they have seen the behavior of Jesus. Now, I want to turn you to the book of Mark, chapter 2. We're going to start reading at verse 1. And again, it says, He entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. And immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. And they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. This guy had four friends who brought him to Jesus, but they couldn't get into the house because of the crowd. So they uncovered the roof tiles. They lifted up the tiles of the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith... now, now you can't see faith, you can't see hope, you, you can't see love, but you can see them when they're in action. You can see them and know them by their actions. It's just like love. Love is not love unless it has some actions. It's not just talk. If, we're, if uh, love is only a word, it's not really love. But what you can see here is this great thing called faith is now made visible by how people acted. Jesus saw their faith. And so uh, the Bible says, he looks at this young man and says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts, and they said, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Well, that's really not a problem because God's there. But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier? To say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And that's what he said. And to the paralytic, he said, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, go to your house. So he did both. And immediately when he arose, he took up the bed, went out in the presence of them all. So they were all amazed, and they glorified God. And they said, we've never seen anything like this. So God wanted to call attention to the message of Jesus. And the reason he healed so much, two things. Number one, he wanted to show his heart and his character. And God's heart and character is to love people and to heal people. God cares about people. This is why God, or why Christ many, many times told people when he healed them, don't tell anybody. Because it wasn't just about the news. It wasn't just about the spreading of the news. It wasn't just about the testimony. It was because he really cared. So on certain occasions, he said, don't tell a soul. 
and almost nobody obeyed that. But the point is, is he wanted to show, I don't heal because I want to be famous. I heal because I care about people. And that's what you see. You see this. Jesus had this amazing faith. He's using this faith. It is the parent force that created the universe. It's only natural that physical things respond to his words. But this is the point that I want to make. The people who had faith in this story, it wasn't just Jesus. It was those four friends of the cripple and the crippled man himself. They all had faith because faith is contagious. And when you begin to read the stories of Christ, it'll build your faith. Your faith will become stronger. When you hang around people who have faith, it will embolden your faith because faith is contagious. And Jesus' faith spilled out onto people. And as a result, they did some extraordinary things to receive from God. Well, that's all the time that I have for us today, but uh, I want to encourage you to stick with me on this because we're just getting started. We're not even the halfway point yet. And tomorrow we're really going to cover some ground and it's going to be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.